In this video, we're going to look at the miles per gallon application. It was included in your book. I believe if you go to the publisher's website, you may be able to download this. Uh, I don't think this is restricted to instructors because it is something that's included in the book. But here I have the book apps from chapter two. And I have I have the directory open uh, in, my, in Windows Explorer, my file explorer. Uh, so we're going to look at the miles per gallon app. So we have a folder that says MPG on it. And if you look inside of it, there's an index.html file, and then there's an mpg.css file. So I am going to stay outside of the folder, and I'm just going to right click on the folder, and I'm going to say open with code. So you should have this open with code if you installed Visual Studio. It may have given you the option uh, to put this in your context menu, but by right clicking on that folder, I can just say directly open with code. It's going to open Visual Studio, and it's going to have the whole folder open for me with the files inside it. I can click on them, and they'll appear over here in the right window in VS Code so that we can examine them and see how they work. The other thing I can do is I can go to the index file. Let's, let's take a look at how, what this does. I'm going to right-click the index file, the HTML file, and I can say Open in Default Browser. Uh, that's if I if you've installed the extension uh, for VS Code for opening files in the default browser. So I'm going to right click that and it shows you the web page. Let's see if I don't I can't make it any bigger apparently, so we'll have to go with this. The the miles driven, let's say we've driven 200 miles and we've used um 10 gallons of gas uh, so it, it pops up these little uh, input boxes for that and it prints out that we've driven 200 miles we use 10 gallons of gas and that our miles per gallon is 20 miles per gallon um, so let's take a look at the code that makes this application work try to make my font A little bit bigger. There we go. My that's too big for for what I would normally prefer to work with, but hopefully it shows up in the screen well. So we have an HTML page here. Let's look at that. Our HTML page. Here's the beginning of our HTML document. Here's the head section that goes all the way down to here, and here's the body of our HTML document. Inside the head section, we have a meta tag specifying the character set. Uh, we have a meta tag for the viewport. Uh, sets the content width to the device width. That comes in later when you're working with uh, responsive websites. S websites that change their di the, how they display um, based on the size of the screen that the user is using. So basically, if you're looking at a phone, it's going to change the format of the web page. Um, using this viewport information. Now, we're not making any use of it. People just put it in there by default now. Um, so when you see that, understand that maybe later on you'll learn what that does, but for now it doesn't, it isn't really important. Here's our title, miles per gallon calculator. We can see that that appears up here in the mile, in the tab for the website. And then we have a link to our style sheet milespergallon.css, mpg.css. So that's the style sheet we see over here. If we click on that, we can look at the formatting for the web page. So let's kind of take a look at that now. Uh, for the body, the font family is set to Arial, then Helvetica, then Sans Serif. So if you look over here, it's all Sans Serif fonts. The background color is set to white. The margins are set to uh, zero and auto uh, auto so zero uh, will be the top and bottom margin auto would be the left and right margin um, which that's what gives it this nice little centered appearance the the left and right margins being set to auto it divides the leftover distance of the page uh, by two and centers everything 
The width of the body is set to 600 pixels. And we have a border that is three pixels wide uh, and surrounds the entire body. And then we have an H1. Well, you're going to learn more about the box model and paddings and borders and margins uh, in an upcoming video. If you, We're probably not that far yet in the HTML videos. H1s are set to be colored blue, and that would be the, we'll see that in the HTML code, but that heading there, everything comes out to blue. And then labels are set to display inline. Again, we'll learn what all these CSS things are, uh, but it kind of, the labels are what is in front of the numbers here. Uh, and their width is set to 5 EMs. Let's take a look at the actual index file. So we have inside the body, uh, we have the main section of the body, and that's all that is in here is, is one giant main division here. Uh, H1 is the miles per gallon calculator, and we saw that's blue up there. And then we have a script tag. So the whole web page is basically this one script tag, other than the H1. So what does the JavaScript do? First of all, we have our use strict directive, uh, which directs our JavaScript interpreter to use strict mode, uh, which really helps prevent some bugs from happening. Uh, get into more details about that later. I think I may have covered it in this chapter. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, we set a constant for the number of miles that the person has driven. So let's look at how this works. We call a prompt, uh, and the prompt says, enter the miles driven. Okay. And when that comes back to us, after the person enters the miles and clicks OK, um, it's going to be in the form of a string. So we have put the prompt inside the parentheses for a parse integer. So it's going to take the string that comes back from the prompt and it's going to parse it as an integer and then store it in this constant called miles. Then we're doing the same thing again. Prompt for the number of gallons of gas that are used. That gets returned as a string. We parse it as an integer. So that prompt is nested inside the parse int. Um, converts it to an integer and we store that as in this constant called gallons. Then we take the miles and we divide them by the gallons and that's going to get parsed as a float because we want to have uh, we want to have that have decimal places and that's going to get stored in this last constant called miles per gallon. All right now we set up a constant called HTML, and this HTML constant is going to hold a string, and you can see that we're using the backtick method here. Um, so the, the HTML string is actually HTML commands that are going to get sent to the document down here where it says document write. Basically we're saying document write this HTML string, which we're creating, let me set this. We're creating the string that gets written to the document right here. So it's going to add a paragraph tag to the string. It's going to add a label uh, to the string. Uh, and that tag, that label tag, is surrounding the word miles. That's the miles that we see right here will be inside. This is considered a little a label. And we'll learn more about that when we cover forms. I believe we'll see the label tag in there. Um, and then we're substituting in uh, the miles constant that we created up here. It's going to get inserted into this big concatenated string that we're doing. here. And then that's the end of the first paragraph right there. The second paragraph has another label for gallons. And after the label, uh, we're printing out 
the gallons. So again, we're substituting in the gallons constant, and then the paragraph ends. So one paragraph, two paragraphs, and then the final paragraph is where we're printing out um, same technique. Paragraph surrounds everything. A label surrounds miles per gallon. And then we're substituting in the miles per gallon. And for that number, we're calling two fixed two, which, may, which sets it to two decimal places. So it rounds the answer to two decimal places. So this long string gets constructed, um, doesn't appear anywhere until we say document write, and then it writes that code, that HTML code gets written to the document. And then that's the end of the script and the end of the web page. So here's the document that we just described. There's the first paragraph with the label and the number, the second paragraph with the label and number, and the third paragraph with the label and the number. If we go look at the source code, so I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to say view page source and that's going to show us the HTML for this page. And let's see if I can scale this up. I can. You can see the HTML for the page uh, reprinted here. So you can always look at any web page and see what, what has happened to display this. All right, so that's a pretty easy small easy to understand dynamic web page it's constructed once on the fly and that's it so in the next one we'll look at something a little more complicated um, not super more co actually it may be less complicated because putting the scripts inside our html makes our html more complicated and harder to read in the next application we look at we're going to use an external script.